and we're back with more Final Fantasy VIII. So welcome back guys, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of the story. But then after that we're going to be cracking straight on with a ton of optional content now that we have freedom to fly around everywhere and it's such a, uh, you know, a nice thing to be able to just fly around the map freely with the Ragnarok here rather than trying to squeeze through all the nooks and crannies with that Balam Garden thing. I'm glad to be shot of that in all honesty. So our first destination, our story destination today is going to be the Sorceress Memorial which is located just here on the map to the east of the Estar place. You can just see it there, and uh, if you turn around, you can actually see Lunatic Pandora around here as well somewhere. There it is, look. Quite imposing over there by the horizon. But for now, we're going to exit the Ragnarok and head straight on in to the memorial. As usual, guys, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoy this episode, and I really do appreciate your support. If you missed out on the last episode or didn't catch the end of it, then before you head on in here, make sure you go to Shumi Village and use your magic drawer to grab the Ultima Magics because the draw point would have reset after our lengthy bout of not using it. And as we go through this optional content that we're doing after this story bit, we're going to make sure we keep heading back to Shumi Village as that Ultima draw point replenishes in order to get nicely stocked up on what is really the best magic in the entire game. So we'll speak to these soldiers, and the Esther soldiers, and they're going to let us through. So Renoa has been captured. Well, I say captured, she did voluntarily hand herself over because she's technically a sorceress now and they need to do something about that. Once you have control of Squall, we just need to move on ahead to Renoa for even more scenes.
Right, so now we have Renoa back in our party and we have our next destination set in mind. But we're not going to Adia's Orphanage at this particular moment because as I've said, we have a lot of other content to cover. Content which you can completely skip if you're not interested in powering up your team or getting all the items, Guardian Forces, etc, etc that are optional. But this is a Japanese role playing game so I'm not sure why you'd be playing if that's the case unless it's like your 10th playthrough then perhaps. But I'm certainly going to be doing it, so I hope you guys will join me as we do so. We're going to begin by getting a brand new Guardian Force, and then after that we're going to move on to even more stuff. So the Guardian Force we're going to be collecting is Cactuar. And in order to do so, we need to fly first of all to the small island near where we were farming Cactuars early on in the game. We can reach it now that we have the Ragnarok and we can land straight on it. And you need to equip your characters with uh, as high strength stat as possible and make sure you junction water to their elemental defence. And don't give mug to anybody since the mug sucks. So, one thing I highly recommend is that you have the hero item. If you remember the hero item uh, makes your character completely invincible. And I've got a hundred of them. And to get a hundred, I did uh, explain it when we did this, but just in case you missed that bit. You just need to use Quetzalcoatl's card mod ability on the Laguna card. And that will give you a hundred hero items. If you don't have them, then they're not essential for this fight. But they do help against the Cactuar's 10,000 needles ability. Which basically hurts, in all honesty. As you can tell by the name, you know, it does 10,000 points of damage. So, just kill these things. Zell uh, won't do much damage to these because of his low hit stat. But that's not a big problem. He will be able to hit the boss we're about to fight because he doesn't have a higher Vade skill such as those little Cactuars have. So, in order to enter battle, we just need to wait for him to pop up. And then kind of run into him. Oh, there he is, look. And there he goes again. There is it. Once you've engaged battle, we'll see this giant cactuar, which we need to defeat, of course. And he doesn't do much damage, in all honesty, apart from his 10,000 needles. Attack, which is a counter, which isn't a 100% counter, but he does do it. So if you don't have a uh, hero, then make sure you just have plenty of Phoenix Downs and the item command. They're the magics you can draw from him. I don't really need them, in all honesty. But, uh, you know, they're there if you want them. One thing I would recommend is casting Meltdown on this guy. So that you can improve your uh, physical attack damage. And then we'll start casting heroes on everybody. He does have a lot of health, this guy. Up to 330,000 health, depending on his level. So Meltdown reduces the vitality of the one it's cast on. And now we should be doing a nice amount of damage to him. So maximum damage with Squall there. Oops. It's probably going to take a few rounds for him to die. But when he gets to, I think it's below 10% health. Might be 20%. He has a chance of escaping. And if he escapes, you're going to have to do the whole battle all over again. So... If you can get into limit break range before the fight, then that will help. But because I'm doing so much damage here, I'm hoping it's not going to be necessary. But maybe for you it is. If so, just enter the battle with yellow health. And then you can, you know, cast Renzakukun or whatever it is with Squall. And when he gets to low health, then you'll be able to finish him off quite quickly. So Hero doesn't last forever. So you can recast it if you so forth with.
But I'm not going to bother casting Hero anymore now. If my characters die, my characters die. In all honesty, I'm not too fussed about that. I do just want to get him killed if at all possible. So if this is your first time killing him, you will get an achievement. Since I've killed him on a separate playthrough, I won't be. But that's pretty much all there is to that fight. As long as you can guard against 10,000 needles and you have the means to do a lot of damage to overcome his high health range, then you shouldn't have a big problem. So you get the Gaia's Ring for that, which is a very nice item, which is why you don't want to mug. And you get to name your new Guardian Force. So, Cactua actually has a substantial amount of decent abilities. In fact, some of the hardest uh, to find junctions in the game Cactua can learn. I mean, you can't see them all at the minute. But what I would recommend you do is uh, go for Luck Junction, Evasion Junction, and then go for Evasion plus 30%, uh, Defend, Luck plus 50%, Kamikaze. Uh, where's that? There it is. Okay, in that kind of order. So he's got lots of good abilities as well. In terms of setting our Guardian forces up now that we have another one, uh, we're going to give Katua to uh, our strength character, which in my case is Squall. But we're actually going to change things around a little bit now. Okay, so we're going to. Just unequip everything from every character, first of all. And I'm going to show you the most optimal means of equipping your team with Guardian Forces now that we have all these extra GFs at our disposal. Why am I nerve? I know, not even in our party. Right then, so we'll start with our defensive character, which in my case is Zell. And we're going to give him Brothers, Carbuncle, Leviathan, Doom Train, and Tombre. And you can equip them with magics uh, appropriate, of course, to their stats. But I'm just going to show you the actual Guardian Forces for now. For Squall, who is my strength character, we're going to be going for Shiva, Diablos, Pandemonia, Alexander, and our brand new Cactua. Which means, of course, our magic character, in my case, Selfie, but you might be using Rinoa. Uh, that's entirely up to you. We're going to give her the leftovers, Quetzalcoatl, Ifrit, Siren, and Cerberus. So we're going to have a good setup now of Guardian Forces, and I'm just going to equip my characters with the appropriate magics. Before we finish off today, we're going to go for one final draw over at the Ultima draw point in Shumi Village. A uh, quick word though on the Guardian Forces and how we've set them up. You might find that some of your strength characters, in my case Squall, uh, is now low on strength. But this is the best setup for endgame farming because it allows you to maximise your bonus abilities, your stat bonus abilities such as Strength Bonus, Magic Bonus, Vitality Bonus, Spirit Bonus, etc, etc, amongst all your party. And ultimately, we really want really want their stats being boosted as we level up now. Especially because some of the areas we're going to be going into shortly will have high uh, levels of monsters that are going to level us up and we don't want to waste not boosting up our stats as we do so. That said, you should still be able to use your Magic character and have them equipped to the T with a high magic stat ready for our drawing here. So if um, Ultima draw point hasn't replenished for whatever reason, then just come back outside, equip, and count on an and run around on the planes for a little bit, and that should reset it. So we just want to get rid of some of these Ultima magics off self here since she's carrying a maximum amount. Uh, where are we, Ultima? There we go. We'll give. 15 to Irvine. Oops. 
And we'll go for the obligatory save. And then go ahead and hopefully the draw points will be there so that we can make our draw. So this is something we're going to have to keep doing as we go through the optional content because this draw point is not available for much longer in terms of the story content. So we do want to make use of it in order to get a nice supply of Ultima Magics. I just got eight on my first attempts, which is why I suggest you save. Because that's just not good enough, unfortunately. Fifteen, that's more like it. That's what I like to see, maxing out these stocks. So fifteen is the most you can get, which is why I only bring Selfie down to eighty-five. But it now means that she has a hundred. And Irvine, who is my second resource at the moment... Uh, has 57. I think it's going to be a, another draw or so. And then Ultima, uh, our second stock will be powerful enough to give to one of our equipping characters. Since Ultima is very, very powerful. But that's it for today, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. We've got a new Guardian Force. And next time, we're going to get another Guardian Force. So that's coming up in the next episode. And lo and behold, that's why I haven't done any AP farming yet for our new Guardian Force. It makes sense to get both of the two optional Guardian Forces before we do so. But please do come back next time and join me for that. And we'll do some other stuff as well over the next few episodes. Optional stuff, boosting up our party. And getting us ready for the final battles. Because we are actually getting close now to the end game. So thanks for joining me everyone. And I'll see you next time for more Final Fantasy VIII.